enjoyed today. It's just been incredible to see the massive diversity that everybody is bringing to this. And, you know, something I was um, uh, doing as I was going along the day was taking notes. So if you've seen me typing a lot, especially other speakers, um, uh, that's been because I've been basically putting my uh, presentation together as the day's gone on because it felt like the right way of doing things to round off the day by responding to actually what what has happened and what's been brought up and you know the just the vastness of this is incredible you know we've had people here today talking about nature connection through art ecology people with backgrounds in physical health bringing spirituality archaeology psychotherapy political activism tarot group work meditation surfing forest bathing i mean it, it's it, the vastness is incredible and i think that's why i'm drawn to this so much and why why i love this so much because it's one of the most you know therapeutic things that we can come to i mean ecotherapy must be you know the the oldest kind of therapy that there is i mean we are part of nature and yet the ways that it can be done are feel almost limitless um like when darren was talking he mentioned like it's everything and i felt like that just captured what i what i wanted to say actually so thanks for that darren it felt like i think you kind of you know put it in a nutshell there and for me i guess there's something about um being deliberate that I think is really important with ecotherapy. So there's something around deliberately doing things and deliberately connecting and acknowledging ourselves as a part of nature. Um, and again, they were just things that came up for me as the day went on. I was feeling this sense of, of yeah, acknowledging ourselves as a part of all of this. And it's almost like the way that we do it um, takes us to the same place, whether we're sketching a tree or with forest bathing or whatever it is that we're doing, you know, we, we, we're coming to that same place from, from a different, uh, you know, a different route or a different journey. Um, you know, and for, and for me, it isn't something that I've, you know, I haven't been, uh, uh, you know, what you might call a nature lover all of my life. I mean, most of my life, my adult life, I never paid, I don't think like, it feels like I didn't pay five minutes attention to nature or the world around me at all. And I guess I got to a point where, again, like Satinda mentioned, people often hitting a brick wall. And I think I probably got to that place myself. And it was, I guess, a lot around identity for me. And I think that, you know, there's, um, you know, there can be a lot of positives in, in, in identity, especially for people you know, who are part of marginalized groups and in celebrating difference, that's a really, a, a really good side of, of identity, I think. But there's also a part around the way we identify ourselves with various things that can be very limiting. And, and my background was, I trained as a counselor, but I was mostly a musician. I was a punk musician. I was, I was angry, you know, and, and I was screaming about my anger all the time. And that was a really good and positive thing in a lot of ways. Um, I came from a background in political activism, mostly around identity politics, um, but it started to eat away at me at some point, and yet I continued to to live, I guess, in a way that that was damaging me and holding on to anger about a lot of things that I think was uh, became part of my identity in a way, um, and yeah, I, I ended up stumbling across some um, Buddhist practices and um, basic mindfulness practices. And I tried my first ever mindfulness practices outdoors. It wasn't deliberate. Um, I think it was just because I was walking the dog and I'd read the book. It wasn't any, any kind of plan. And honestly, it was like the world just, just changed. You know, I was just looking for a way of living in the moment because I was aware that I was always in the past or always in the future and, and never actually here. And I had a real realization that I don't want to live my life like this anymore. You know, I don't want it to just pass me by and be lost in completely lost in fantasies and imagination. But 
when I practice these mindfulness activities just in a, a normal local park, nothing spectacular, not out in the wilderness or up on a hill, you know, taking in the most spectacular views or, you know, or, or, or anything like that, just walking around the local park. I just let go of my, my, my thoughts for a while and everything came alive. And that's the only way I can describe it. Like I saw how alive everything was and I just walked around smiling. Like, how, how have I not seen this? How have I been walking around my whole adult life? Not when I was a child, because I think most of us as children are connected, but my whole adult life, how have I, how have I not seen the aliveness and everything? And when I discovered the term ecotherapy later, I thought, that's it. That's what I've been doing. But this is the term, like everything, we need to give a word to something to describe it, even though it is this huge, broad thing. Um, it just felt like this is where this is where my life's taken me. So, you know, to, to be here and be a tutor on this program is just is, is incredible. And I'd like to, I guess, share a couple of um, I guess a couple talk a bit more about a couple of areas that maybe haven't been spoken about too too much or too in depth although I think a lot of it has been touched upon which is great and something that I've been doing a lot of in the last year since COVID hit is uh, distance work with people so online ecotherapy um, a lot of people were very averse to that term when I started saying that I was doing it and I can understand you know um people being concerned about ecotherapy moving online or ecotherapy uh, becoming uh, a, perhaps an indoor thing but i think we've touched uh, a, a lot of presenters today have touched upon this mind connection and how important this is it's not something um that only happens outdoors and even though i think it's really important and i'm especially bringing to mind what satinda said about just uh, putting your hands in the soil and not even necessarily, you know, thinking this is a therapeutic thing, just something that, you know, she had to do. So I don't in any way propose, you know, um, this as something instead of going outdoors to practice ecotherapy, but something alongside it. Because as COVID hit, it was clear that we couldn't do things in the usual way. And I began to notice that people were responding really well and often people who um, probably wouldn't necessarily engage with ecotherapy. They might not go out to a group. They might find it too intimidating. Um, you know, I was running online groups um, where people for various reasons could be disability or around mental health, you know, felt like they could try something new because it was safe and it was indoors and it was on a screen. And I know that some of those people have taken a practice outdoors. I'm brought to mind of someone I was, I was working with who was a, a, a wheelchair user. And I didn't realize when I was doing this online group via Zoom that she actually hadn't left the house in three months. And um, she'd experienced some kind of verbal hate crime and it really put her off going outside. Um, but after we did a session where I invited everyone just to, to bring something that's natural to the screen and share why we're drawn to it, which can be a really powerful exercise. Um, you know, by the time we'd had a few sessions like this, she'd made a, a she talked about the fact she hadn't been outdoors and now said, now I'm going to go outdoors. You know, I feel like I need, I need to go out again. I realize what I'm missing. But but even besides the fact that it can be accessible, I think it, it you know, we sometimes need uh, that, that sense that we're connected to the bigger picture in the moment. Like we as in every single person, whether there are, are barriers to being outdoors or not, because, you know, we as a, you know, most societies spend a lot of time indoors, even if we're the most outdoorsy person. And, it's, it's about what's happening here. It's about, you know, uh, I mentioned before in a breakout room, like looking at this wood sometimes and just going like, this grew, you know, that's just mind blowing sometimes that this, what I'm, you know, sitting underneath here was part of a tree that grew from a seed. And, and, and you know, having this, this awareness is, 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 is something that's just, I think, really powerful. So, 
Um, I also think online work can encourage a healthier relationship with technology for a lot of people. So it doesn't have to be something that's distracting. It can be something that is, um, you know, a, a way that we can, you know, in our quiet, cozy time, perhaps, you know, watch a powerful video, watch a, 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 a you know, a, a safari park somewhere on the other side of the world, or like Paul was showing with his globe, something that I've shared with people is watching a NASA video of the globe turning and just watch meditating with a, a YouTube video. And I know those two things, meditation and YouTube, shouldn't really go together. But but sitting and meditating just with the image of the earth and just focusing on that as being where we are and everything that will happen there. So it's, it's happening there. And, you know, how that intersects, you know, being indoors and, and working indoors with ecotherapy with art and literature and, and, and all of these things is really powerful. So... Um, I just wanted to say a word about that, but also I wanted to um, share a bit about an area that's been really um, growing in my life and in my own ecotherapy practice. Um, I'm going to take a sip of water, though, because I seem to be, as usual, talking uh, 100 miles per hour. So. so when I did the 10 Directions course, um, the part that really spoke to me, like really deeply, was the, the, the myth and creativity section. And that just sent me off on uh, a path in life. It, this, this, this big path in life that it's brought me on from Buddhism to nature, to, to myth and story. And my own work has been incorporating storytelling. So I've um, been training in oral storytelling skills in the traditional um, oral storytelling traditions um, and there's something about myth and legend and folklore that it gives shape and story to to the processes that nature goes through it can be a, a, a metaphor just for this amazing earth that we live in it's 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 connecting with the unknown it's connecting with the mysteries of life and the possibilities you know, I think it's important to say that, you know, some myths and legends might actually be true. They, they, you know, I think it's okay for us to consider other realms that our imaginations might be tuning into with these, with, with looking at folklore and connecting with it. And folklore is collect, connected so deeply with nature. It can be almost like nature is, is, is speaking and, and giving shape through these stories, through our imaginations. And it's okay to believe in other possibilities and to feel that when you're connected with nature. But it's also okay that if that isn't the case for you as well, because I think with folklore and with storytelling and with mythology, it sometimes just draws attention to just the amazing creatures that are out there in front of us in the physical. I mean, birds, for example, if, if they didn't exist and you tried to describe them, they would sound like the most psychedelic creatures, you know, these beings with beaks that, that flap their wings and fly and sing in the morning and lay eggs, you know. You would think like, what, what, what kind of human imagination, what kind of culture creates a weird, myth, you know, mythological creature like that? And for me, there's something about storytelling and mythology when we, we expand our imaginations and we go into it that draws our attention to, to, to what to what's here physically in front of us in the physical earth, you know? There's ancestral connection with it. It can be almost like a, a nature meditation to be really involved with someone who's telling a story or to tell a nature story. To be in that moment and to be lost in it, it's more than just entertainment. Although it can be that as well, and I think that that's, that's fine. Um, and it, it's just been really powerful to connect with it. So. Um, I've created uh, an online storytelling ecotherapy course, which I'm just coming to the end of the first run of now. Um, and it's, it's just been really powerful to see people come from different parts of the world, sharing different stories from their, 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 their countries and different time zones and different continents. Um, 
And in the, the course, I, I, I share stories. I tell stories via video. Um, I share them via audio. So people sometimes go out and listen to the stories whilst they're in nature. And then we'll respond with, uh, I will give an exercise related to the story. So um, the, we almost become, become part of the story in a way. Um, you know, it becomes the inspiration for our connection. Um, and yeah, when I put it together, I was really thinking like, is this, is this going to work? You know, it's so niche, but actually it's where the, the realm of working online, I think, can be powerful. And I've also just been um, offered a bursary by the Scottish Storytelling Centre to research my local area lost folklore from this very small area in Scotland where it's going to become a, an ecotherapy book as I do it. So I'm not just going to share the stories. I'm also going to invite people very explicitly after each tale is finished to connect with nature in some way that the story inspires. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up shortly. I wanted to share a little bit, just, just, just to broaden things even more and, you know, I, I think the, the great thing about this is that this is where my work is now with ecotherapy, but where it is in the future is, is, you know, who knows? You know, I think that's the beauty of this. You know, nature is everything and we're in movement like, like nature is and like the seasons are and, you know, our practice can, can move and can change. And that's what's really beautiful and inspiring about ecotherapy. I don't feel sort of pegged in by it I think you know we we obviously have to work within boundaries and, and with good ethics and all of those things are so important no matter what we're doing but there's also a broadness um it, nature shows us diversity and change doesn't it and I think this is this is reflected in in how we practice as we've seen in all of the different uh the different presentations today so it's it, it's very much this huge umbrella it, I, I'm, I don't even, I couldn't even call it a therapy. I think it's numerous therapies, you know, and there's probably all kinds of ways of working within ecotherapy that none of us here today have even thought of. Um, and we'll probably be really excited about hearing one day. So um, I guess the final thing I would like to say, and I really do need to hand back over to Caroline, but something I do often hear from the clients I work with, especially when we start, working uh, for the perhaps with people who haven't heard of ecotherapy before is that um, they're looking for a distraction from their problems or they think that being working outdoors in nature or or even indoors or however we do ecotherapy will be a you know a, a good thing because it'll take their mind off real life but I'm always very quick to say well actually you know often what's happening in our minds our anxieties and 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 stresses this is not real life and what is around us is what real life actually is nature is real life and the ecosystem is real life and our messy minds are are, are not oh <laughs> most of the time that's really what this beautiful practice does for me it, it, and for so many others puts me in touch with reality rather than take me away from it so um i don't feel like i need to plug the 10 direction program any more than you know it has been done already you know i, I think uh, you know it's 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 a great course i'm proud to be a part of it and um, and yeah I, I think that's pretty much me so thanks for having me and lovely to be here cheers <laughs>